Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. This module is part of the Secure and Preserve Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll explore some basic electronic records management principles and several of the leading related standards in play as shown here. Records management refers to a set of activities required for systematically controlling the creation, distribution, use, maintenance, and disposition of recorded information maintained as evidence of business activities and transactions. The key word in this definition is evidence. Put simply, a record can be defined as evidence that a particular event took place, a birth, an x-ray, a purchase, a contract approval, the sending and receipt of an email, and so on. Records management is primarily concerned with the evidence of an organization's activities and is usually applied according to the value of the records rather than their physical format. Essential records management capabilities including assigning unique identifiers to individual records, providing safeguards against unauthorized changes being made to those records, and creating an unbreakable audit trail for reasons of accountability and e-discovery. Unique identifiers are usually generated within a database for systems administration and tracking purposes, and they should not be confused with reference codes, which may be composed of more than one part. Unauthorized changes are prevented by implementing airtight manual procedures or using software applications, like encryption or digital signatures, to keep a document from being modified after it's been declared a record. Audit trails guarantee an enforceable chain of custody by making it possible to know what a record said at a particular point in time, how its content evolved to that point, and who was involved with it. The key is to preserve the link between the record and the process or event it describes, and for being able to demonstrate exactly who made what changes and when. It's important to note here that as important as these capabilities are, and as critical as it is to find a records management solution that supports them as well as the tasks illustrated on this slide, it's even more vital that you take a long-term view of the process, since some records, most notably in healthcare and government, need to be managed literally for decades, and digital technology tends to change frequently and degrade quickly, certainly faster than paper does. So it's imperative that you periodically refresh and migrate your electronic records in order to ensure their long-term accessibility. In the past, the term records management was sometimes used to refer only to records that were no longer in everyday use but still needed to be kept, so-called semi-current or inactive records, often stored in basements or off-site. Today, though, it tends to refer to managing a life cycle of electronic records, from the point of creation through their eventual disposal, as illustrated here. It's important to note that a record can be either a tangible object or digital information, but for all practical purposes, regulatory compliance necessitates that business records be managed electronically, hence the term Electronic Document Records Management, or EDRM. In order to be viable, an electronic record must be capable of being digitally created or captured, and then copied, distributed, used, maintained, stored, and ultimately disposed of with ease. It must also be usable with, and by, other EDRM systems in order to facilitate commerce and any other activities that require records to be exchanged with other organizations. To facilitate this, standards of information description and records management naturally arose, perhaps the most immediately notable of which are described on the following slides. ISO 15489 provides an international standard for defining and executing records management, putting a number of critical practices under this umbrella. Setting policies and standards, assigning responsibilities and authorities, establishing and promulgating procedures and guidelines that ensure the key characteristics of a record, which are authenticity, reliability, integrity, and usability, providing a range of services relating to the management of use of records, designing, implementing, and administering specialized systems for managing records, and integrating records management into business systems and processes. 
ISO 23081 complements 15489 by specifically covering the metadata principles and practices relevant to electronic information handling and record keeping. A two-part technical specification, it defines metadata needed to manage records. Part 1 addresses principles, Part 2 addresses conceptual and implementation issues. And then there's the Dublin Core, which many of the metadata-minded know of even if they can't cite the ISO numbers from memory. Named after the core set of metadata elements developed by metadata and web specialists in Dublin, Ohio back in 1995, it has since been adopted by the ISO as Standard 15836. This organization's work has been ongoing ever since through the auspices of the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative, or DCMI, an open organization engaged in the development of interoperable metadata standards that support a broad range of purposes and business models. Today, it is dedicating to providing simple standards to facilitate the finding, sharing, and management of information. CMIS, the Content Management Interoperability Services Standard, is aimed specifically at improving interoperability between content management solutions, and thus, by extension, it embraces records management solutions as well. Initiated by AIM, CMIS is now being administered by the OASIS standards body. MoREC 2010 is an important specification for validating records management applications' ability to manage records throughout their life cycle. Short for Modular Requirements for Record Systems, it was commissioned by the European Union and includes a metadata model that's predominantly a superset of the Dublin Core model. And if we're talking MoREC 2010, then we have to mention DOD 5015.2, another metadata validation specification published in the U.S. Department of Defense's Design Criteria Standard for Electronic Records Management Software Applications. Originally for use in defense, it has many metadata elements associated with the security classification and the access controls applicable to military information. But it's now used more widely and used as a quality benchmark even where formal compliance isn't required. Both MoREC 2010 and DOD 5015.2 are specifications that allow vendors to get tested and certify that their solutions meet particular records management standard requirements. This model has explored some basic electronic records management principles and several of the leading related standards in play as shown here. Next, you may wish to look at the module on records declaration, retention, and disposition. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.